This is part 101 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss grouping sets in SQL Server. Grouping sets is a new feature introduced in SQL Server 2008. Let's understand grouping sets with an example. We'll be using this employees table in this demo. I've already created this table. Here is the SQL script to create and populate it with test data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now, based on this employees table, we want to write a query that is going to calculate sum of salary grouped by country column first and then by gender column. So the result of our query should be like this. So if you look at the data here, notice for female employees in India, we are paying 4,000 as the total salary. For UK female employees, we are paying 5,000. For US female employees, 12,500. So here, the salaries are grouped by country and then by gender. To achieve this, we can write a simple group by query, as you can see here. Within the result set, we want these three columns, country, gender, and sum of salary. So within our select list here, we have country, gender. We are applying the sum aggregate function on the salary column. And we are giving that column an alias, total salary, from employees table. We are first grouping by country and then by gender. I have this group by query already typed. So if we execute this query, we should get the salaries grouped by country and then by gender. So along with this, we also want the sum of salaries grouped just by country. So if you look at the three rows that are with green background color, notice that for Indian employees, we are paying 12,000. Now if you look at India female employees, we are paying 4,000. For India male employees, 8,000. So if you add those two rows together, 4 plus 8 is 12,000. So for all Indian employees, it is 12,000. Similarly, if you look at UK, for UK female employees, it is 5,000. For UK male employees, it's 12,000. 12 plus 5 is 17. So UK total salary by country is 17,000. Now, to produce these three rows that are with green background color, you know, we can use another group by query, as you can see here. So we want the country. So within the select list, we want country. Now, since we are grouping here just by country, gender is going to be null. So we are selecting null for gender column. And then the sum of salary from employees, and we want to group just by country. And between these two group by queries, we are applying union all operator. So this query is going to produce this result set. Let's quickly look at that in action. So I'm going to make a copy of this query. And then I'm going to make the modifications. So we want country. Gender is going to be null because we are going to group just by uh, country. So from our group by clause, I'm going to remove gender. And between these two queries, we will apply the union all operator. But before that, if we execute just this query, notice that we get the total salaries grouped only by country. Whereas when we execute this query, we get the first six rows, that is salaries grouped by country and then by gender. Now, if we apply union all operator between these two group by queries, we get the result set that we see on the slide here. Now, in addition to these two result sets, we also want to compute total salaries grouped just by gender column. Since here we are grouping just by gender, country column is going to be null. And to achieve this, as you might have already guessed, we are going to use another group by query. And that group by query is going to be very similar to the group by query that we have used to produce the country groupings. So I'm going to make a copy of this second group by query. So now country is going to be null because we are going to group just by gender. And we want the gender column. And within our group by, we're going to use just the gender column. So when we execute this, we should get the total salaries grouped by gender. And now between all these three group by queries, I'm going to apply union all operator. So when we execute this, we should get the result set that we see on the slide. Now, in addition to these three result sets, we also want the grand total. So here we are not grouping by any specific column. We are not grouping by gender or country. We want the grand total of salaries. You know, basically the total amount of um, salary that we are paying for all employees across the globe. To achieve that, I'm going to use another select query. Now we don't require any group by clause at all. You know, country is going to be null, gender is going to be null. 
and we just want sum of salary column across the entire table. So when we execute this, we should get the total salary that we are paying for all our employees. So now we are going to apply another union all operator here. So when we execute this, we should get the result that we see on the slide. Now, if you look at this query, we definitely have two problems here. First, the amount of transact SQL code that we have to write is huge. Second, to produce this result, this transact SQL code is going to hit that employees table four times. So it's not very good from a performance standpoint as well. Now, if we use the grouping sets feature introduced in SQL Server 2008, then the amount of transact SQL code that we have to write will be greatly reduced. This is just the amount of code that we have to write to produce this same result set. Okay, so let's look at that grouping sets query. So within our result set, we want those three columns, country, gender, and total salary. So the select clause is not going to change. Country, gender, sum of salary. We're giving it an alias, total salary from employees table. We're still going to use group by because we use grouping sets with group by. So group by and grouping sets. So we specify our grouping sets here. So we have an open and a close parenthesis. And then we specify our groups. So we want to first group by country and gender. So the first six rows here will be produced by this first grouping here. Okay, so this six rows, you know, have the salary grouped by country and gender, and this is the group that will produce that. And then we are grouping by country. So the next three rows that we have here, so we have got three countries, India, UK, USA, so salary is grouped by country, and this is the group within our grouping sets that's going to produce those three rows. And then the rows 10 and 11 are produced by the third group that we have here, gender. And then to produce this grand total right here, we're using this empty parenthesis. So this is basically telling to SQL Server we want the grand total of sum of, uh, you know, salary column. All right, so let's look at this in action. Let's fire up another query editor window and I'm going to make a copy of this select query. So we want to use grouping sets. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then we specify our groups. First, we want to group by country and gender. So this is going to give us the first six rows. And then we want to group just by country, and then just by gender, and then finally, grand total. So when we execute this query, we should get the result set that this union all operator has produced. Now, if you look at the data, first of all, look at the number of rows. The union all query has produced 12 rows. The grouping sets query also produced 12 rows. But if you look at, it's the same data, but if you look at the order of the rows here between the grouping sets query and the union all query, it's not the same. Now, if you want to control the ordering of rows, you can use order by clause with this grouping sets query. So for this query, you know, basically to produce the data in the same order as this union all operator query, I'm going to use order by, and we are first going to order by country grouping, and then by gender grouping, and within each gender grouping, we want to order the genders, okay? So, order by, I'm going to use the grouping function, and we want to group first by country grouping, and then by gender grouping, and then finally by gender. So when we execute this now, the ordering of the data should be same as well between these two queries. Thank you for listening and have a great day.